All right, Dominic, thank you. And we have continuing coverage tonight on the legal and criminal part of this story. The TV I shared this picture as we've been showing you of DeHart. You just saw it being loaded into a cruiser and handcuffed after he was caught yesterday here in Knoxville. A Blount County Sheriff James Barong says he's hoping to see DeHart face the death penalty, but the decision will be up to DA Ryan Desmond, who said he will meet first with McCallan's family um, after this day is over, and the process could take a few weeks. DeHart has a court appearance set for tomorrow morning at 9, at the same time as his brother Marcus, who faces charges for being an accessory after the fact, accused of helping helping Kenneth DeHart avoid getting caught knowing that his brother was a wanted man. Joining us now is our legal analyst, Greg Isaacs, to go over the legal process. Thank you so much for being here. Lord, it's good to be here. First of all, let's walk through the charges against Kenneth DeHart, beginning with first degree murder. Uh, let's talk about what that entails. That is a knowing, intelligent, premeditated killing of another. Uh, in Tennessee, it can carry 51 years uh, or life without parole uh, if there's a notice and a subsequent uh, conviction by the jury. We just mentioned the death penalty. Uh, the sheriff said, absolutely, I want that to happen. There has to be steps taken before that can happen. It will, and I think Sheriff Barong in that very emotional press conference mm -hmm. will get his wish. When he mentioned the DA of Blount County, Ryan Desmond was a few feet behind him over his shoulder. And what happens is the district attorney has to file a notice of death. Uh, then if it is a capital case, death is different. Uh, a lot of different motions, a lot of different things. Jury selection, uh, much different than a regular homicide case. And after a conviction, then you have a mini trial on the issue of life or death. And what the state has to prove is one of nine statutory aggravating factors beyond a reasonable doubt. They have to outweigh any mitigating factors mm -hmm. proven by the defense. But let me tell you the three that are in play. Uh, the first one is DeHart had previously been convicted of a crime of violence against a person, 2004 police standoff with a gun. Second, uh, trying to eliminate or kill a witness. Uh, my sources say that he fired uh, as he was leaving. Uh, so that's going to be a factor. Wow. And, and the last is uh, the fact that McGowan was a law enforcement officer. So you've got um, on their face three solid aggravating factors. So if you're the defense in this case and there is a notice of death filed by Ryan Desmond, uh, your work is cut out. You're saying that your sources said, just to back up a little bit, that shots were fired as DeHart allegedly was leaving the scene of this latest incident. Yes. Wow, okay, we'll look more into that um, as this case progresses. Let's talk about the attempted first degree murder uh, of, Dep of Deputy Eggers. Uh, that is significant as well because it involves a law enforcement officer. It is, uh, that's an attempt, it's one level down, mm -hmm. uh, 15 to 25 years. Uh, so it was, it was apparent uh, that the heart uh, in this crime spree, uh, not only unfortunately, brutally, senselessly killed Officer McGowan, uh, but attempted uh, to kill his uh, companion. We're almost out of time, but I have to ask about uh, the two accessory after the fact charges against DeHart's brother and girlfriend. What kind of time could that bring if they're found guilty? Under Tennessee law, an accessory is someone that warns, harbors, or aids somebody mm -hmm. after a crime has been committed. You would think in a crime this, this heinous, this atrocious, mm -hmm. that carries this much time, it would be a significant felony. Uh, unfortunately, under Tennessee law, it's an E felony that carries one to two years, wow. uh, but still a serious felony. Um, and I think everyone is going to be uh, in court tomorrow in Blount County. We'll be there, 9 o'clock. Greg, thank you. Thank you.